The uh, Santa Barbara Real website um, does say here your key to financial freedom. If you click on the key, it's going to take you over to this over here, which is all the free trading. So we have free, free trading on marketing, free trading on real estate, and free trading on going green, which is kind of personal development and kind of leaning towards some other stuff too, because on this, which is really taking you back to the Personal Power Project website, it's just all about personal power. It's about you gaining what you need to be able to live your life without having to pay, not only depend on, but having to be beholden with the utility companies and the health, you know, insurance companies and everything else. So it, it's a good thing. The marketing part of this goes back to my website, which is Santa Barbara Computing Services, and that is where we do the marketing aspect of this. Uh, mainly, we're dealing with something called social zing marketing, which has all these different tools to do all this marketing. I thought it was kind of a no-brainer in the beginning; it'd be really easy for people to sign up for this and you know build teams on <coughs> marketing. It's not. It turns out that it's really pretty expensive. You know, it's hundred dollars a month, but if I looked at uh, what I was spending with uh, GoToMeeting, uh, Constant Contact, Eye Contact, and a few other things, I was easily spending a hundred or more on separate products. Once I started using this, I was spending about the same amount on this. But it's not a business that you're going to get a bunch of people to sign up underneath you and make a lot of money on both of the marketing side, because I just don't see it happening. In fact, I see most people kind of like, who needs marketing? Well, you know, well, um, <laughs> It pays a market, but you've got to be careful about what you're paying for, you know. And so you really have to look at this like, well, if I'm going to use something for my own business, what am I currently paying? What am I willing to move on with? Will it really serve? Some of the things in here that I like is the ability to uh, have 100 concurrent users on some webinar all at once, to be able to text to a thousand people, you know, at once, and have all that stuff go back to a log file within the program rather than your cell phone because you can imagine if you text a thousand people and had everybody getting back to your cell phone and how that would be havoc on your life and having to deal with all that. Well, no, it's all done within the program on social thing. There's a lot of other things there too. So for your own business, great. Thinking about building a bunch of people underneath you, good luck. Because there's a lot of things out there that are a lot less expensive, but they're individual and don't house a whole, you know, four or five or six different things that this does. Uh, that's what it looks like on the website. And then it's got some video stuff there that you can look at if you want to check it out. Um, personal Power Project. Anybody in here driving a Model S? I saw one this morning on the way in. Did you? <laughs> we have one of our members, Sanjeev, who comes to some of our meetings. And after we talked about this enough, he went out and got one. He's driving Model S. Pretty nice cars. We're just driving a Nissan Leaf, you know. <laughs> but it's wonderful, you know. They, they look ugly as heck. But when you start driving and you feel the kind of power, you imagine that that Nissan Leaf would have power. It's all of a sudden like, wow, this is like driving a model Tesla S, you know. You have this big smile on your face and everybody's driving by looking at you and like, no, I would not be smiling. I would be hiding my face, you know. <laughs> But it's great. You take it home, plug it in like a toy. It's wonderful. So we got a lot of stuff going on in the Personal Power Project. And it's something you ought to check out. Getting solar, going green. Um, we're going to have some health stuff on here. And I promised my wife I would not talk about it. Because she's involved in this. And she wants to get a little bit more prepared. And it's good. And some of the stuff we've talked about had speakers in on in the past. So next month, well, not next month, we're going to have a big meeting. Next the month after that. June, July, and July would probably be hot to trot and all that. Okay. Um, so let's talk a little bit about these two different businesses that I've got going. National Home Buyers LLC and National Home Buyers Investors Group Inc. Okay? So as you can see, this is an LLC. Inc. that's actually a C Corp. And I spent the last six months, you know, Victor talked about building the infrastructure, and you know, we get kind of carried away where we know we have to go back and deal with that infrastructure. And me, as a computer person from UCSB for 26 years, my biggest thing is I've got to stay away from the computer stuff, otherwise I'm just playing with toys and hiding from actually doing this business, you know? <laughs> that can happen real easy. So if you're trying to do something you've never done before, watch yourself 
start sliding back into what you've done in the past as a way to hide from what you really think or want to go to. Because that's, you know, we all slip back into what we're comfortable with and what we've done in the past. That's a good sign that you're, you're playing that game, okay? So on the national home buyer side, which is investment income, tax-wise, completely different than earned income. And there's a fine line in here on the earned income, whether it's earned income or not. This is uh, $20,000 to $100,000 properties, joint venture, single family homes, okay? Are we getting those in Santa Barbara? I don't think so. Not at that price point. That's not happening. Um, could we even get, well, there's some places that we could get $100,000 homes in California. But most of this stuff, it, I really don't like doing rentals in California because California is tenant friendly, not investor friendly. And when you start doing a lot of stuff on a national level, you begin to realize the big difference between tenant friendly states and cities and investor friendly states and cities. So what happens is if you end up trying to do rentals in a place, how you doing, girl? If you end up doing rentals in a place where uh, it's tenant friendly, it's a nightmare because you could be there for six months trying to get them out, dealing with lawyers and all kinds of problems. We just got back from a trip in Puerto Rico and I went out there for two reasons. One, we flew over one time when we came back from Aruba and I looked down and Aruba is really pretty desert, nice where the vacation places are, but as we came back over Puerto Rico, to land in Florida, I looked down and I went, God, look at that beautiful ocean down there, and it's all green, that's where I want to go. Forget Aruba. So, you know, a few years later we went, well, and I'm going to have a property up there that I might be able to wholesale. It's about eight and a half acres with a house and a little 12. When I talked to the lady out there about the possibility, I said, well, you know, if we bought it and wanted to rent it, what would you say? About the problems we might run into renting. And she said, Oh my God, you want to rent a property in Puerto Rico? Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> this is a tenant friendly place. You will have people in there for six months squatting, and good luck getting them out of there. In fact, we were at the Hilton Marriott, and it was a huge complex, and probably one quarter of that complex was actually being used, and that's where we were staying. Beautiful. The other three quarters, it looked like something that you would see in a movie with all these vines and jungles growing into the buildings because they left it vacant for the last 12 years because they had a problem with the uh, labor and uh, the locals and they just didn't, they just walked away and said, you know what, forget it. We're just going to close the doors and shut it down. We sat there for 12 years. Now Marriott's coming back in to buy it out. They're going to have to demolish the whole thing and start over. But I think that's an example of how difficult it can be working in places where it's either investor friendly or it's tenant friendly. Okay? So you really gotta ask yourself before you go there, what are you, what are you doing? Um, on this side here, and it's big ink, this is twenty thousand, maybe. And we try to stay away from doing flips at twenty thousand because if you were doing a flip at twenty thousand and it took twenty hours to do it, and you could do a flip on Excuse me, you can do a flip here for six million. What kind of fee do you think you're going to get out of six million as opposed to twenty thousand? And it's the same amount of time usually. You're going to get a much bigger fee out of a million dollar property. Now, Victor and I have got a contract on a property for is it four point five million? Yeah, six point five. Like six point. Dropped it down to four point five. That's where we're at right now. Up in San Francisco. Yeah. And of course, the. Uh, First thing that uh, the owner of the property said is, "Hey, this is a beautiful property. It's right as you head on the Golden Gate Bridge, 6.5 million, and you're telling me that you want to give me a $10 contract? Are you serious? Are you crazy?" And I said, "Victor, let me talk to him." Victor said, "This guy's like really, he's over the edge." So I got back to him and I said, "Well, now think about this. If you go to a realtor, they're going to tie it up for 60 days or whatever." six months, a year, whatever they can, and you're not going to be able to really do anything with it because you're going to have a signed contract that you've given up your control. We're not doing that. You can still go out and sell it all you want. But if you were an investor and you wanted to buy the property you were thinking about buying it, but you knew that the owner had the right to drop you just like that with another buyer anytime they wanted to, would you fork out $5,000 for an earnest deposit? 
said, oh, yeah, I guess I would have a lot more. Yeah, a lot of other things. You know, if you don't have them locked in and the investors can come and go, they're not going to spend $5,000 on an earnest deposit. You know, if you want the freedom to go and do what you want, then you're going to have to live with the $10. If you want to get locked in on something where you can't go do what you want to do, then yeah, we'll go out and we'll go get a, a big earnest deposit. What do you want to do? And he goes, well, I don't want to be locked in on nothing. I said, well, then $10 out of work. He goes, yeah, okay, it works. <laughs> so, uh, so it's, and just I made, it's just a principle of the thing. Well, you have to, exactly. It's a principle and you have to have a legally binding contract. <laughs> and that's what they use to bind a contract is a monetary thing called money. Uh, uh, and it doesn't matter what it is, but it's got to be something. How do you find out which states or counties are penny friendly versus ask? Do the phone calling. You've got to ask. I don't think you can go to some website and it's going to say, "Stay away from this place. Go over here." You know, it's one of those things you've got to spend time asking. And that's why I say when people come into these meetings, I say, you know, you're never going to learn what you need to to learn here today. It's not going to happen. You're going to get a little taste of. <laughs> A little taste of the possibility, but you can go to a number of other places and pay $25,000, $50,000 and get a three day boot camp or a two week boot camp. You're not going to learn what you need there either. You need to really work at this business six months, a year, a couple years. You just keep getting better and better and learning more and more. Now, if you're going to be paying a lot of money to somebody to get trained constantly, you're going to go broke. Some people have spent $150,000 just in education alone. That's crazy. And that's why we provide the training for free, because we know that it doesn't matter if you pay money or not, you're either going to burn out and quit, or you're not, you're going to move forward. If you move forward, we're going to make money. You're going to make money, we're going to make money. Okay? We know that if you burn out, you're going to be gone anyway, so we're not going to waste our time. It's just that easy. You know, we're here to build relationships, and it works. Um, National Home Buyers LLC, so this is, you know, not a $20,000 property. That's actually our house in Santa Barbara. And I just wanted to show you that it does snow in Santa Barbara. Now, this was like way back in 96 or 7. I can't remember. There was snow up there. There was snow up there, and there's a picture to prove it. Uh, in our drought now, good luck. We're not going to see that for a while. But in any case, this is the website for the turnkey properties. Okay, real estate made easy. That's the view out of our front room window with the love boat heading through the Channel Islands there, you know. And uh, this is the important thing on the website. So if you go to the website, you want to go look for the page that says about investing. Drop down a menu and look at this. Because what this basically shows you as an example of some of these houses that are in the investor-friendly places that we go, if it was 20000 and we got $600 of income per month in rent, we're really looking at uh, a return on investment within 12 months of 36%. And when we split that, I get 18% and you, the investor, gets 18%. And within five years, it's almost paid off in the rent. Within six years, if all goes well, you know, these are not guarantees because that's why they say any investment is a risk. So don't. You can have 10 properties, and some will do good one year, and some will do better a different year. It all depends. But in any case, 18% return, and then by a month of the six year, it's paid off, and now you got 100% return. It's pretty hard to get that in the stock market. Unless you are doing, what do they call it, inside, insider trading, or <laughs> something a little more illegal. Okay. So in any case, when you go to the website, this is what you want to look at. And if you're if you're one of these people who say, look, I hate real estate, I don't want to deal with tenants, I don't want to hear any of that stuff, I love to paint. I'm down there at the beach painting pictures, and I'm making lots of money selling it down there. I just want you to deal with it all. Well, that's what we do on this side of National Home Buyers. We do all the work, hiring, firing, everything. Virtually. Not physically, but virtually. Okay? On a national level. And uh, I've even gotten set up LLC for my daughter and my son, Michael. Hey, he's Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and the driving force was actually his sister because she wants to be a nurse and she's down in Long Beach right now. And she said, Dad, you told me you pay for half of whatever school I want to go to. 
where's the money? Show me the money. So I, you know, she was, got me going, kind of kicked me in the butt. I went, yeah, I'm not paying attention. So I ran out. In about six months, we got a property per month for four properties in her LLC, a lot of elite LLC. And that will pay her $60,000 because she's going to be a nurse practitioner. In about six years, that will pay everything and she won't have to pay a dime. I said, I won't have to pay a dime either, but I will have to do the work to manage it make sure it all does what it's supposed to do. Same with Michael. We're gonna, we've got a couple of properties in his, we've got a couple more to go, and then it's kind of like, okay, we've given you the pull, we've given you the fish, you got the education, now it's yours to build it up as much as you want and do what you want. Funny thing is, when you've got it, Sure, it might be a feeling of, well, I can just kick back and do less. But it's pretty hard to do less eventually when it's yours because you're going to have to start dealing with it. And once you start dealing with it, you realize the potential. There's going to be a driving desire to, wow, I, well, I want to get 10 or 15 more of these things in there, you know? And there's only so much of that stuff that you can do because it is a full-time job. People say, well, Dan, aren't you afraid of competition? No, it's a full-time job. You'd have to quit what you're doing. Does she outsource the property management stuff to you? Absolutely everything. She's going to school and she's getting straight A's down there at Long Beach. I swear. Got straight A's in high school, straight A's at City College, she's getting straight A's at Long Beach. And she says, yeah, my friends are all worried about going to work part-time and what they're going to do about the college bills and all this. And I said, do you ever tell them you have an LLC with four properties paid for free and clear? She goes, are you kidding me? I don't want to even talk about that. And I said, good, don't. <laughs> you know, it's just not a good thing to be saying. So just enjoy, go to school, do whatever. So when she graduates, she'll not only have that, but she'll have a part-time job, you know, an investment where it's forcing her into learning how to manage her money and, and the importance of all that. Okay? So that's the LLC side of things. This is the NHB Inc. side. Okay? The reason that I spent the last three or four months heading down this road is because the market's changed now, I've had an <coughs> website, nhpick.com, for, I don't know, five, six, eight years, something like that. And during the downturn in the last two years, ten years of uh, downturn in California, any rehabber, you guys are in Ventura? Mm -hmm. What's the name of your company? Gray. Gray's Home Buyers. Gray's? Yeah. Okay, Gray's Home Buyers. These guys are in Ventura. Okay, and we might be able to do some business and get them up on the website and have them be trainers too because they are already doing the business in Ventura. They're already rehabbing and they're already building teams and we can help them build their teams and somehow we can all work together. But you guys know for a fact that if we're in a downward market and you spend $50,000 in Ventura fixing the place up, it could be worth $75,000 less in three or four months before you're through with the rehab at the pace the market was going down. So a lot of rehabbers just went, man, I am out of this business. A lot of realtors went and got a different job. They just said, forget it. Well, now the market's starting to go back up. And it is easier to do it than the market's going up, right? If you make a mistake, well, we just lost $10,000. That was a big mistake, but guess what? Equity bill left, just gave us $20,000. So what? It's beautiful. And that's the whole thing about equity. It doesn't matter what kind of real estate stuff you're doing, the real wealth in real estate is equity appreciation. These properties that we're talking about in other places are great for paying your monthly bills so that you can relax, because all that stuff's kind of handled. But the real wealth is over 30 or 40 years of equity buildup. And you can have those properties, 100 of them, in some place out there, they're never going to go up in value like they will in California, Washington, Oregon, Las Vegas, Florida, New York, or some of these places that go way up and way down when they have problems. If you're speculating on it, you need to sell at the top. Most people are in denial and don't get out in time. Okay. If you're not speculating, at least if you hang on to them for 30 or 40 years, you can do different things with them. You can refinance, you can sell things off, you can juggle things around, which is you know what we recently did to refinance. That's where the real wealth is built. But who wants to wait 30 or 40 years? Well, if you're going to be alive, you might as well make sure that's part of your portfolio, but also do other things. Okay? So there's the place that Victor got on the contract for $6.5 million in San Francisco. Here's why I did MH Big. If I go back out and start doing some of these flips in California or other places like that, and all my LLCs are in Nevada because I didn't want to pay $800 for California, 
Good reason not to. And I'm not doing rehabs because when you guys do rehabs, you own the property. You actually put the property in your name, you fix it up, you sell it. That's in this category, okay, as a flip eventually, but that's a flip as owning the property, okay? So that's not earned income. That's investment income. Tax-wise, it's completely different. If they said, no, we're not going to fix it up, we're just going to make a contract, we're just going to flip the property, sell it to somebody else, sell it to somebody else that, is in, that is earned income, not investment income. Two completely different things tax-wise. Now, the reason this makes a difference is if you are doing flips where you're not rehabbing, you're just assigning the contract in the wrong kind of entity, and I'm not licensed to give financial advice, so this is just my opinion, and you know what they say about those? <laughs> Everybody's got one. Well, so I'm just telling you what works for me and what I did. The truth is you need to go through and look at you personally, because even though what I did works for me, if you don't have a bunch of properties, you know, you spend a whole lot of money needlessly, okay? doing different things. All these people with these entities that are selling entity programs will say, oh man, you're going to go to jail. You don't do this. You need to sign up for $20,000 worth of asset protection. Well, if you don't have any assets, who cares? <laughs> you know? So it's really a personal thing that you need to spend your time, just like finding out if it's an investment friendly or a tenant friendly place. Because what happens is this. <sighs> you know, Three or four LLCs, 20 or 30 properties, IRAs, which we have traditional Roth for my kids and for us. We've got uh, coming up on solar 401ks. If you were doing these contract assignments as earned income and not actually buying them, and the IRS came in, and I don't really know anybody that this has happened to, but I've read it, I know it does happen, and, and these people sue the IRS when this happens because the IRS says, well, we don't have an exact number before you get to the point where you're going to say, hey, you, you stepped over the line and now we're going to deem you a dealer, a real estate dealer, and we are going to negate every LLC you've got, every IRA, every sole 401k, and tax-wise, that income is going back to the standard 36%. You have no more advantages other than asset protection. You just lost it all, and you owe us a lot of money if you're going to jail. There's a fine line between rehabbing and contract assignment. Rehabbing's great. Keep doing it, LLC, whatever. The main thing, and that's like an S or where it's passed through tax-wise to your account. In a C court, and I almost went with an S court until I got spent another month or two asking. And the thing about asking people is you've got to ask a lot of different people the same question a lot of different ways. Because eventually somebody's going to go, Oh, why didn't you say that before? And you go, because I'm stupid. I don't know how to ask the right question. And it's true. We're stupid. We don't know until we know, right? And it's you'd be surprised how many people you ask the same question. Eventually, they, they give you the answer that you were looking for. So for me, you know, C Corp it was the ticket. And there was other reasons for that, too. There's huge write-offs for your medical. We plan on leasing back every three years electric cars. As they go from Betamax to you know MP3s or whatever the technology is with car batteries, you know they're going to be obsolete and useless. So why buy them? So we'll lease those, give them back to them every three years, and also as far as home office deductions, you know don't do a home office. You can write off twelve, eighteen thousand a year as a meeting because the cost of a meeting like this is a thousand dollars per day. You add that up, you know, for the meetings that you would do for your C corp, you get do this stuff in your house, write that off. A lot of different reasons for going with a C Corp. I finally got it, it took me months <laughs> as we're doing the infrastructure dance and not doing the real estate, you know, stuff we're supposed to be doing that generates money. But we got it, we're there. Okay? So NHB Inc. And as we go through and look at this, I wipe the old website out and put up a new website to make it easier to deal with. The free training, so if you jump on here and go to the free training page, each one of these links will have different video recordings that I do at my home on the computer, the laptop, and talk about these different subjects. 
because you're not going to get it all sitting here today. Already place else for a couple of days. You're just going to get a taste of, oh, I don't want to do that ever. Oh, I do want to do that. So that's what's going to happen as you go to these places. You're going to get a, a taste of what you want, and then you're going to continue on. So all these uh, are free. They're up there for your access. Up here it says, wouldn't we have actual live meetings? That I'll be there doing that. I can answer questions and talk to you. If the date is passed, that means we're not having one. But if you see a future date, that means we're going to have one. Be ready if you want to. It doesn't really matter if you make it, and that's why I do it this way. I can never make it. They say Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. I plan on it. Something comes up, it's like, well, I guess I'm not going to be making that one. So I just have put it up there, give it to people, let them get to it at their leisure, how they want to. And underneath the uh, blog section of the website, we've got uh, Blog Talk Radio. I just did an interview on that with uh, Linda the August about this meeting <coughs> next week. So we'll do uh, speakers from out of state that just go, well, I'd love to come to Santa Barbara for a business vacation, but I just can't do that. We could actually do a quick little audio thing and put it up there. So that'll be up there. Check that out. What do you get if you work with us and it's all free? You know, you get like business credibility, which is the biggest thing, like Regina and I just talked about here earlier. It's very hard for you to go to somebody and say, hey, you know what? I know I've never done this before, but can I list your house and tie it up for six months? Sure. <laughs> all right. <laughs> sure, he said sarcastically. There's my business card. <laughs> That's a tough one, and that's what we're here for, is to provide the credibility so that she can say, well, you know, I don't have all the answers, but we work with people who've been doing this for 34 years. Well, let's get them on the phone, let's conference them in, let's figure out how this is going to work. And it's a lot easier for people to go, okay, well, I haven't signed anything yet. Let me hear if this bozo's got something better. You know, then I get on the phone, okay? So that's kind of how that works with the credibility, and it does make a difference. It makes a huge difference. Business cards, thousands of leads nationwide. We're paying for leads that we can get from websites like Ken Closures, Find Cash Buyers Now, and stuff like that. Well, yeah. You can say, hey, Dan, I need your help. We need to do this in Pennsylvania. Pull out a list of 1,000 or 2,000 people. Let's use social zing and let's just text, you know, 500 of them. Hey, let's get a buyer. We need to get this thing going. Um, access to software. I've got lots of software. Podio, we do everything with uh, Citrix Podio. You guys have heard of uh, GoToMeeting. It's the same company that makes GoToMeeting. They're here in Goleta, California, along with being global everywhere else. Great program, it's free. You, none of this stuff you have to pay for. This is all stuff that I pay for on a monthly basis, okay? So there's all this stuff in here. How many people in here right now are working with me, doing some of this stuff, okay? Sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay. So we've got some people in here that have some experience. So if you've seen their hands up and you're kind of wondering, then go talk to them at the break time or whatever, before or after. Get a sense of what it's like. The nice thing is it's free, so anytime you want to check in and see if it works for you, you can do that. Business cards. We've got plenty of ways to get access to vacant homes and find uh, different people. You'll be surprised at some of the things that we do <laughs> that you would not want to have a real estate license to do because if you do what I did or I'm doing sometimes with a real estate license, you lose your license. They don't pull it and go, oh, that's illegal, you can't do that. And, you know, it's not a huge illegal thing. Somebody might make a big deal about it, but if you've got a license, they'll make a big deal about it. Guarantee you. So on the associates page, we're going to start building this up. You click on there, pick an investor, or pick a, a trader and then start getting your training. If you don't like that trainer, there's no contracts, there's no paperwork. You just get on there and go, hey, you know, Greg, I saw you, hey, Victor, I saw you, and I see you're doing some free training. What happens is in the training process, if you're getting trained by somebody there, and I plan to have 10 or 20 people up there within the next year or two, there's no contracts, there's no money, there's nothing. If you find a property, or properties, and one of those gets closed on, the trainer makes the money, not you. But once you've gone through maybe 5, 10, or 15 phone calls where you've listened on a conference call with the trainer, talk to these people, and you go, wow, that is like so great and dead easy, I could do that. And you start doing it, and then we close one of those properties, that's when you start making some money. Okay? And then eventually you go from relocating properties to locating the buyers 
Because when you're looking at properties, you make a 500 property, you get four properties or five, it's $1,000 per property. But that's fine. And when you get to the point where you start locating the buyers, the cash buyers, then you get 50% of the fee. Now, I've made $50,000 on a $10 contract actually years ago, which got me out of the university. I went, wow, this job is so easy. I'm going to quit my job right now. I'm going to do this for a living, you know? Yeah. And I did. And as soon as I got out of the university, guess what happened? The market with me. And I went, holy crap, this is a lot more difficult than I thought. You know, this is not that easy. So, you know, I learned a lot in the last 10 years. A lot easier to, uh, well, it's actually easy to flip properties in an up market, down market. You just don't want to be rehabbing in a down market. That's all. Okay? So then you have to know where to go. But in any case, uh, so you'll have a chance to do that. And once you start talking on the phone, you start making the money. And then we start driving people, because you have to close a property to be up here. Then it starts driving people to you. So all of a sudden you go, oh, hey, now I'm a trainer. And I get to start putting people underneath me for free. And they get to help me. So we're going to help you build your teams. And eventually get to the point where you go, Dan, we don't need you. Been here for a year or two. Adios. See you later. And what I say is, hey, that's great. But if you go do this business all by yourself, it won't take long before you go, this is really boring. And it's really hard because it takes a lot of people and a team effort to make all this stuff happen. So you'll kind of learn the team thing from doing this in the beginning anyway. And we'll still be able to do some work. Somehow, some way, a deal will click. We'll do something. Okay. Uh, the website listings on there on uh, page speaking, you know, pictures and links to lots of information. Maps. Uh, this will be a full, you know, expanded Google map. You drag this little guy over here. It comes with a street view. You come over here, click Google. It goes full screen. Search. I put some stuff up there. It's got different search criteria. You want to find something that's. Uh, million dollars and it's uh, vacant land and it's New Mexico you can do that kind of search on it other types of search well I just know I want to find Baker put Baker's name in there he pops up okay mm -hmm. other little tips and tricks on that page for that uh, sponsor yep we've got sponsors that is a social thing but if you want to spend some money and give us some money to have your stuff up there and we'll, you could be our sponsor that'd be great um, <clears throat> So, we talk a little bit about C Corp versus S Corp, and that's the whole thing on an S Corp, it acts just like an LLC. It is a pass-through to your personal income tax-wise, and that's why I did not end up going with an S Corp. When I say it passes through, that doesn't mean it's just going to go from someplace to your checking account. It means that tax-wise, when you do your taxes at the end of the year, that's how the money funnels. Okay. Um, again, earned income as opposed to investment income, we talked about that a little bit. Medical, we talked about that. Home office, we talked about that. Vehicle leasing, well, I mean, I just love the fact, like I told Michael, I said, you got an LLC, Michael. You got a couple properties in there, you could have four more properties in there. The properties are paid for free and clear by the investor. All the repairs and all the expenses are paid for by the investor. You're paying nothing. You're getting half the rent. You're going to have a problem at the end of the year. You know what your problem is going to be? Anybody want to guess? Have to pay taxes. Tax. Got to pay taxes. You have no write-offs. So you want to spend two thousand and just give it to the government at the end of the year and say, "Here's two thousand bucks." Or you want to take that two thousand and go invest it in a leased car and get a little write-off? Why not? Spend money on you and a car you'll never have to fix up. So, you know, different things you can do here with this. Tax, uh, you know, who's going to do your interview structuring? Well, there's a lot of places you can go. I've gone with uh, Anderson Advisors out of Las Vegas. I'm actually paying, because we had a guy speak here, about $79 a month for these services. But when it came to them to actually form it, I didn't have them do it because I said, why would I pay you $1,500 to form it when I go to legal zoom and have it done for two or three? Bucks. Yeah, okay. They didn't care. They just don't get my money monthly. You know, who's going to do your tax accounting? Well, I've got them doing some of our accounting. Uh, you can have them. You know, you pay 150 or 200 bucks a month, or you can just do it whenever you need it, which is what I'm doing. LegalZoom. You know, there's a lot of places to go to get help. I just like LegalZoom because they're fast, they're easy. 
They get, they do all the stuff for me. Okay. And here's Victor. What more that? can I say? I'm holding up a five thousand dollar check. Let's get happy guy. Beers on the house. Click, click on the video when you get to the website. That's not our house up there. We're talking about you know some of this money he's making, and you know it's just a matter of how much time you put into it. And I guarantee you, this is not a get rich quick job. This is something that you're going to work at probably harder than anything else you've ever worked at in your life. You know, when I worked at university, my life was like this. It was just kind of gradually boring, and the money was going like this. When I got that check for $50,000 and quit the university, my life was like this. Emotionally, financially, it was like, oh, man, I don't know when, where my next dollar is going to come from, you know? But if you finally, you know, kind of balance it with constant income coming in from maybe rental properties that are paid for free and clear to pay the bills, and you're also doing wholesaling, then you get a little bit of both uh, the best. You just expand that portfolio. It's going to take time. And so I tell people, don't quit your job. Whatever income you've got is gold. Just make sure it's flexible, because when you go into your employer and say, hey, I want to go from five days a week to four days a week so I can do some of this real estate on the side, a lot of employers will say, well, why don't you just go to no days a week? You're fired. <laughs> if you got that as a goal to get out of here, you might as well go now. So you probably don't even want to talk to the employer about what you're doing. You just want to make sure it's flexible. Okay? So we have 2.30, and we have Ivan. And Ivan, I'm going to introduce you, but we're going to give you some time to plug in a memory stick or your laptop. Yep. So let's give a hand to Ivan. Hold on. Having worried there in the beginning, but yeah. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I was hoping to make you sweat a little bit. You did, definitely. <laughs> we're we're going to go with the fashion of the. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to give you guys a break just to you know, get some food, whatever. I'm going to get him set up. We'll come back in five minutes and we'll be good.